Hey, how's it going? This is Roy from RateMyFuneral.com. That was Rate, by the way. <sighs> Look at this idiot. Look at him. McFly. McFly. Oh, I'm just sitting here watching you. Bloody thing. Anyway, we're back. Tutorial time. Let's do it. I'm going to hop straight on in rather than messing around with all of this nonsense. Let me try and explain what it is we're going to do today. So, uh, let me just close that down. We don't need that now. Right, okay, so, rate my funeral. Hello. The other day, I noticed uh, on one of my older tutorials, um, a comment posted. It was on this one, recreate a piece of art. And the comment was from Andy. And, Andy. And uh, he asked if I would have a look at this image, which is here, because he liked it. And I like it, I think it's very cool. Um, I thought I would give it a go at uh, reproducing it. Now, I can't get it quite like this. I've had a few attempts and played about a little bit, um, and I can't quite get it exactly the same as this. Um, and the reason for that is because I think this was done using the Octane renderer. Um, but, you know, we can, we can have a little play and see what we can just do with cinema. Uh, in order to credit it, though, I'm going to struggle. So, basically, I put it into Google Image Search. Um, that's not how you even do it. It's you go paste Earl, there we go. And it came back with this site, the mundogump.com. Um, and essentially, I found it here in this blog here, where there are a ton of gorgeous beautiful looking renders and images and whatnot um, and it's slap bang in the middle somewhere i don't even know where now somewhere in here uh, there it is um, under octane render this is why i believe it must be octane but that's all the information i can find on it really um, so i've no idea who to credit for it but it's a great image let's have a little play and just see if we can model something a bit similar um, and see where we go so the first thing obviously is the font so I had a little hunt around and I found this John Hancock, available from Dafont, uh, which is free for personal use. Uh, this is pretty close. It's not 100% exact, but it's the closest I could find, you know, just having a quick look around. So that's great. So let's start there and begin. Right. Cinema R14, oh, Cinema 4D R7. <laughs> R7. <laughs> Sorry. Um, basically, uh, I don't think I'm really going to do anything. I'm certainly not going to do anything that's R17 specific. Um, there might be a few things that are R16 specific, which obviously is to do with texturing because of the reflectance channel. Um, and everything else, I think you can get away with. Um, I might use some beveling techniques that were R15. I forget now. But uh, essentially, you should be able to follow along with most of this uh, if you actually want to, of course. Let's uh, start by making some lettering. So under the spline, we're going to create a text object. And there's a couple of ways to do this. Is One, you could do this as individual, uh, a 3 and then a D, which will help us a bit later. Um, but do you know what? For the sake of the tutorial and for speed and for tidiness in here, I'm just going to do it all in one um, for now. And you'll kind of see why. Uh, in a little while. So uh, let's find my font that I got hold of, which is under J. Where is J in the alphabet? There it is. John Hancock CP. Um, and that's great. Uh, we need to change the plane from XY to XZ. There we go. And I'm going to make this a lot bigger because I don't want to be messing around when it comes to the, the beveling and the edges and stuff. I don't want to be messing around with point numbers. So I'm going to make it nice and big um, and put it somewhere in the middle. Now, okay, so something that I might do here, because I'm just looking at this, and if we go into the top view like this, uh, they don't quite line up. Now, again, if you do it as individual letters, then it's easy to make them line up. However, um, because I'm not, I'm gonna use the feature down here, which is the kerning. Now, I think this might be 16. So this is only a little thing. If you've not used this, it's quite useful. Oops. Um, basically, I'll just undo that. I accidentally clicked a button. Um, you click on the one that you want to play with. So let's say I want to play with a D because the D is not sitting in the same kind of level. Um, and then we can just move the baseline shift so we can just shuff shuffle that down a bit. And then if we look along the top here, it's not quite 
uh, lining up. So I'm just going to do the horizontal, no, I'm going to do the vertical scale up just a little bit so that it lines up. I'm also going to bring the horizontal scale in just a touch on that one. And then on number three, I'm going to actually send the horizontal scale out a little bit just to make it a little bit wider. So maybe about that much. There we go. So that's just modified my text without with whilst keeping it all param, uh, parametric. Um, not essential, but just thought I'd do it anyway. So, right, let's continue on. Um, let's put that somewhere in the middle there, which is fine. And we'll go back to our main view. And we need to extrude it. So we hold down Alt and select Extrude. Now obviously the plane that it defaults to is over here on the Z, which we don't want. So we'll zero that out and push it up on the Y. Now I'm, I'm doing this all by eye. So probably about there, if I just bring up the original image again, uh, we can have a look and see that we've got, it's all a bit rounded. Um, and there's a, a little bevel here and that sort of thing. So we'll have a go at getting as close as we can to this. Um, I don't think I'm gonna get 100%, but the point is, I don't wanna completely copy the work exactly. I just wanna roughly get an idea of how they got to that so that I could use it for other things. And that's kind of the point of all of this. It's not just to copy the work. So let's put a fillet cap on our text. I'm also going to just go into display, turn on Gurad shading with lines, there we go. And let's add a few more. So we'll go for three on each, give it a nice uh, line there. And I think constrain, hmm, da, 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 no, we'll actually go up maybe six centimeters on each. Um, three is fine because of how far away we are. Uh, the next thing I want to do is put some holes inside of it. So in order to do that, we need to put our text into a connect. So with the text highlighted, hold down Alt, connect like that. So this hierarchy is very important. Um, and then anything that I also add into that connect, I can use to take away from the spline. Now, if you don't know what I mean, I'm just gonna hold shift because the connect object is currently selected. So that will put that inside of there. The axis is wrong, obviously. So we change that to XZ and we need to reduce the size of this circle. And this is what I mean. If I put that circle inside of the three, you can see it becomes a hole in the three. So that's, that's kind of what I want. So I'm just gonna go into the overhead view so I can see exactly what it is I'm doing. Uh, I'll make the size of the circle maybe 50 and I just want to line that up roughly there. That's great. So I'm going to make a copy of that circle, hold control and click and drag. And that makes a duplicate um, and I'm going to do it again. Just grab the handle there so I can move that one to there. So now I've got three versions of the circle in the three and then I'm going to do one in the D as well. Uh, one down here in the D. This is all by eye. It doesn't need to be exact for my purposes anyway. Okay. So that's there. And now if we go back and look, we've got our holes in our 3D text. Perfect. Now for positioning reasons, I'm gonna grab all of these circles and just click and control, copy them so that I have a duplicate of them all. I'm gonna use them to center things in a little while. So uh, we'll come back to why I've done that in a, just a moment. So now that we've done the, the base, we need to do a copy for the top. So if I make a copy of this one, and raise it up uh, just a little. This time I'm gonna hit constrain and that, what is done, uh, has pulled that in so that we've now got our bevel. Just as a note, we could change the fillet type to one step and that will give you a bevel like that. However, the problem is, is then that isn't rounded. Um, so it gives us a really sharp edge. So that's not really what I want. So I'm, just, I'm gonna, this is the reason why I'm doing it like this. Okay, so that's that's that one. And this extrude, the upper one, I'm going to make only uh, something like four centimeters. Now, one thing you may have noticed, R3 has gone somewhat skew if, and that's basically to do with the way the spline is uh, working in the text object. So if we go to our spline and change the immediate points from adaptive to, I've got to try and remember which one worked best, uh, uniform, there we go number eight and that's now fixed that if you ever get those kind of weird things just change these and play around with the uh, options and you'll normally find one that, that works a bit better so we now have that so we've now got a shape that's not dissimilar to what we had in the uh, in the example image um, one thing I think I'm going to do is add a bit of uh, 
a texture inside here by creating a tube, tube, uh, hold down Alt so it centers to that circle and then take the circle back out of it again. See, this is why we had this. Um, and let's bring that into about there and bring the outside right in. This is kind of where we start to lose track of what we're looking at a little bit, but it's fine, it's fine. We just shrink that down uh, and move this up. And I think I'm gonna place it just covering up where that, that indent is there. So what that gives us is it gives us a gap at the bottom, then this kind of ridge and then up. And because we're not gonna see this, this hole, it doesn't matter that that's a sharp edge or anything like that. So that's fine for that. Uh, the next thing I want to do is put one of these into each of these circles. So I will hold control and click and drag that into each one like this. And then I want to locate these into these automatically. So all I do is make sure that you're in uh, model mode and you're on your, uh, maybe on your um, live selection tool and go to your tube and down here in position, we don't want to change the Y because if we change the Y, it, it moves it down. But if we change the Z and the X, obviously the Z's the same in this case. So the X, that's fixed there. So here we want, just want to do the X and the Z. Press enter. This one, same again, X and Z. This one, X and Z. Something went wrong, try that again. There we go. And the same for the final one here. Cool, right, there we go. So now we've got these in each one. So that's that done. So we can take all these tubes back out. Okay, right. And now, so that I know what I'm doing here, I'm gonna start labeling these a little bit. Um, so here I will, I've got, that's the upper one and that's the lower one. So we're gonna just write lower here and upper here. All right, please excuse me while I just have a drink. Excuse me, thank you. Right, so we're getting somewhere. Not bad, not bad. Um, what is next? Let's just have a look at our image again. So we've got this shape down the bottom, okay? And then we've got this gap. Then we've got another one above and we've got this spring and a pin and all of that sort of thing. So we'll make the one up, up on top first, then we'll come to the springs and the pins. So let's see, we need to basically make a duplicate and kind of invert it. Um, what? I think we will do is get all of that and press Alt G to group them and we'll call this lower, uh, we'll just call it lower, yeah that'll do. Um, and then I'm just gonna, now that the lower is selected, I'm gonna click hold control, click and drag up and raise it. I mean, I don't know how high I'm gonna do it, I mean, maybe about there, we'll go with that, that's probably fine. And the, the difference is I want this, upper one, currently upper one, on the bottom, and so on and so forth. So we'll go inside of this and we'll get the lower one and just lower that like that till it's about where we want it. And then I'll just get the whole thing and just move it up just a little bit. Now our tubes are in the slightly wrong place now, so we'll just highlight them all and move them to where we want them. So somewhere about there. Great. Cool. Okay, so now we're almost ready for our pins, but I'm going to do something a little bit different here. So uh, if we look at the original, we kind of have these lips and I want to try and replicate those as best I can. Um, and really the easiest way I think that we're gonna get away with doing this um, is just to sort of manipulate this version here. So what I'll do is I'll make a copy of the lower one and hold Alt and click on this until it goes red to hide it. And then this one's now gonna be the one I'm gonna play with. So I'm gonna hit C to make that editable. All right, and now if we expand this, you'll see that we, what we've got is two roundings and two caps. And basically the rounding two is our top kind of uh, all the edges with the with the curves on them. So literally the rounding. And then the cap is the whole thing. So if I go into play mode, you can see there, that's the cap. And then there are the roundings. And it's the roundings we're gonna play with. And now this bit is a little bit long and laborious. So uh, you'll have to bear with me here. But basically what I'm going to do is go to the line mode 
and press U, L, and that will give me the loop selection tool. And I'm gonna just hover around until I get all the way around this. And then the idea here is I'm going to expand this, but I wanna do it to all of them, not just this one. Now, I don't know of a better way to do this other than to literally hold shift, go around and click on each one uh, to add them. So I've got those three so far. Maybe you know a better way. If you do, stick it in the comments. Even if you don't, stick that in the comments. Tell me that you don't know a better way. It'll make me feel better about myself anyway. Right, so now that we've selected them all, we'll hit D and uh, that gives us our extrude. So we can now just press and click and drag out a little bit. So that now drags out. And if we look, that's created a kind of fan coming out of each one. So it's close. We just now need to, if we angle the camera so we can see whereabouts this is, but keep this in view, we can then just move that down till it's just about right. So I'm gonna go for there. Okay. Next, another one, U, L, but this time on the uh, polygons selection tool. And now I wanna grab the in inner ones of these. So I don't wanna grab it when it's like that. So if you do that, undo, Forget it, right, grab it when it's like that, hold shift, grab that one, that one, and that one. And we've got to do this on all of them. So boom, boom, boom. Boom, oops, undo, boom, boom. Ba, 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 ba. Boop, boop, be doo. Board yet? Right, cool, okay, so now that's those grabbed. So then we'll go back to our points tool, and again, just keeping one of these in view, I'm gonna lift that. So there we go, that lifts that up a bit. Cool, obviously I'm hoping that's about where I want it, but I can't really tell. The next thing is obviously I've got this big gap inside here, so I need to fix that. So I will again go back to the line, grab the uh, UL loop selection tool, go around and select them all again. Please leave me a comment. I get really lonely otherwise. Right, okay. Shh. So now that I've selected all of these, we'll hit D again and we're gonna extrude, but this time we're gonna extrude downwards. So there we go. We'll just grab that down and about to there. Great. So we've kind of got these little bits on each of them now, which is kind of what I want. So if I just hit render, we can kind of, I stopped saying kinda. We can see that we've got these shapes on there. Fantacker. Okay, so what is next? Um, let's make the pins up. Now, uh, the way, there's a multitude of ways to do this. I'm just gonna have a drink. Thank you. Um, and yeah, I think the easiest way is definitely just gonna be to start with a cylinder, make it editable um, and, uh, you know, extrude it. I mean, you could maybe do it using a loft nerbs, but geometry might go a bit nuts uh, and it'd be a lot of effort. Whereas this is quite straightforward. So with one of the circles selected, I will create a cylinder holding Alt, take the circle out. Let's go down and find it. Now this is where it's gonna get a little bit tricky because we can't really see, but we can do a trick where we go to our lower one, go to basic and then turn on X-ray and that way we can actually see inside a little bit. So that might just help. Uh, let's find our cylinder, which is there. Okay, so we need to change this about a bit. Now, if you're not planning to get too close to it, 36 rotation segments will be fine. If you do wanna get right up close to it with the camera, then I would maybe recommend uh, upping that. But for now, this is fine. So I want to get this and the radius about right. So 50 there is fine. So let's put this so that it's coming out of the bottom. <coughs> um, there we go. Ah, it's nice, too big look. So we'll shrink that down. There we go. Lovely. And just leave that like that for now. Uh, let's go into an upper view so we can kind of see where, we'll look down through the hole. Cool. Um, go back to polygon mode, select a cylinder, press C to make it editable and grab all of them. Next, you want to press uh, D 
to extrude it. So we're going to extrude it till it's about to hit our first uh, nobble, which is there. We can see that kind of about there. So we'll do that. And then we need to go into our inside view and have a look and we'll press I and shrink that in. And that's about right there. And then we'll press D to make that lift. And we want that, uh, I'm too close. I can't see where I am now. Look, we come out. All right, so that's maybe a bit high. So we'll just move that down a little up to about there. Um, and the way we'll now do it is I again, make it nice and thin because this is our pin. Uh, we could maybe go really thin, do D a little bit and then I again to come out and then D to go up. So now we've kind of put a little ridge in there. Um, how high we've got to go is anybody's guess. We want to go up to about there, somewhere around there and then we'll press I and expand that. We could actually maybe, yeah, it's a bit tricky to tell. I think, let's undo, go back a little bit. Let's do to about there. Um, let's go I, let's go in a little bit, D to go up a little bit, and then I to come back out, and I'll just add a little bit of something going on. We need to get up to about where the the inside is. So this is again all kind of guesswork. So it feels like it's about there. And then I to shrink that in. Uh, D to come up a little bit further. I to come out. And D to go up. Cool. Okay. So we want to come up to just above maybe right um and now the top one i am going to i'm going to bevel it so go to mesh create tools bevel and we'll just come up a bit there something like that and maybe use that tool just to shrink that in something like that there we go okay right so that's our pin I've just noticed though, oh, it's kind of gone a bit funny that I didn't really want this to be quite so big here. Let's, um, I'll tell you what, let's get this out of here and we'll have a look at it. So take our cylinder, we're gonna press Control X to cut it, new, paste. Right, so this is in a new scene so that we can go and have a proper look at it. Uh, so we've got some issues with, um, the uh, angle limit there. So I'm just gonna put this angle limit down a bit so that that doesn't look quite so strange. And basically what I didn't want was this fat area here. So I don't know if I can fix this very easily. Um, let me see if I do that, 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 that. That was UL by the way, again, to grab this dude here. Then go, mm, okay, it's a little bit odd. Um, it's not really what I wanted to do. Delete. <laughs> mm, let's not do that. Now we'll, ju we'll just live with it, I think. Um, we could start again and just do it again, but you know what, for this tutorial, we'll live with it. It's fine, it's fine. Right, okay, no worries. Right, so this cylinder, now it's a bit jaggedy, so I wanna make it look a bit cooler, so I'm gonna put it inside of a hypernerbs. Now that's come out really odd. So first thing, just for while we're editing, I'm gonna put that down to one in the subdivision editor. Um, and we need to fix this up now. A couple of ways you can do it. You can use the weight nerves tool if you're used to that. Or the easy way is just to go to the line mode, press K, that will give you a knife, go to loop. And basically you just need to sharpen these edges up a bit. So where you put a cut will sharpen it. So if I put, uh, we need to turn off restrictor selection. There we go. And if I put a cut there, you can see it just sharpens that edge a bit. Put one there, it'll sharpen that one. We can put one underneath there to sharpen that. Work our way down. Something like this. This is all done to taste, etc., etc. Because I've got my subdivision so low, though, you'll see that it's not adding 
that's how it will come out on the final. But, oops. but just for, uh, there we go. Let's don't go for two actually. All right, so cut you in there, cut you in there. So that makes that fairly sharp. Uh, same with that one. Cool. And the bottom one's pretty, pretty sharp anyway, hmm. which I kind of wish I hadn't done. So maybe for this bottom one, if we do UL for the loop selection, grab that one there, go to mesh. Actually, we've used it recently, so it'll be in here. Look, no, it's not. Oh, because this is a different project, no problem. So create tools, bevel. Um, and then we can just click and drag just to add a bit of a, no, we can't, oh, okay. Okay, so we can't do that because they're slightly, they're different, okay. I thought that would work, but apparently not. Um. Okay, so this is obviously something to do with the way this mo this uh, was created. It seems to think that the 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 bottom section is not co actually connected. So, uh, oh, how are we going to do this? Um, I want to work this out, but I'm just not sure how. So yeah, so oh, that's no good. Okay, right. I'm going to do this. It's going to take me a minute, but I'm going to do it. So I'm just going to shrink that down ever so slightly. Uh, and I'm going to connect all this back up again. So back to this. So I wasn't actually expecting to do this in, in this tutorial. And this is, to be honest, probably going a little bit too far. But um, basically, basically with the bridge tool, I, I won't whiz ahead actually. So I've gone to the line mode. Um, I've got the cylinder selected. And I'm going to select each one of these. And basically click and drag to reconnect it here. So this is going to take me a minute, but you've already invested some time. So I'm sure you won't mind me doing this. And again, this might be another thing where you might have a better way of doing this. I'm up for learning as much as you are. This is where I'm glad I didn't raise the number of um, rotation segments when I was talking about this earlier. I often get asked like, what's the easiest way to do things? And I, I don't know, I see sometimes I think the easiest way is actually just doing it the hard way. And I know that sounds a bit counterintuitive, but I maintain that sometimes you can spend so long messing around, trying to find the easy way to do something that you uh, actually might as well have just done it the hard way in the first place. <laughs> God, there can't be that much further to go round, surely. Ah, no, look, we, the end is in sight. I don't really know what, what else I can talk about over this, you know. This is quite a difficult thing to commentate to. There we go. Right. Cool. So we've put a little bit of an edge on that now. Uh, and it's made it one model one unit <laughs> unit there we go so that's looking pretty cool now okay so let's put that back down to one for now and the next thing i might as well do while i'm here is create the spring for it so the spring uh the way i think i'm going to do that is um a helix hold down alt so it's in the right Area, plane, X, Z. You'd have to excuse me, I've now got hiccups. Uh, I'm going to reduce the radiuses. Um, it's kind of hard to tell exactly where to yet, but uh, I want that to sit. Uh, actually, I want that level with that, because this is where the, uh, the bottom of the plate on the letter is. Uh, then the height, we'll bring that down so that it sits about there. Cool, okay, and then we'll just ramp up the end angle. There we go. Right, good.
great. So we've kind of made our spring. Uh, we need to put it inside of a sweep nerve. So hold it Alt again, and we'll add a circle to that. So this time I'll hold Shift, and that will automatically put it in. Now, obviously this has made a big blob, which is not what we want, but the reason for that is because the circle's huge. So let's just shrink that circle right down. So maybe, yeah, let's go for five. Let's, let's, yeah, five, nice and meaty. Right, uh, we've got an awful lot of geometry there. Um, we don't really need that much geometry. So if we go into our immediate points angle and just raise that up, um, we're not getting too close to these at all. So maybe about 25 will be fine. There we go. And that won't then completely destroy our system when we make lots of them. So we've kind of made this, this shape now. So let's put our back to that one. That's cool. We're happy. So back to one again, because again, we're going to make a few of these. Now let's uh, group these together. So we we'll select them both, Alt G. And we're going to copy, Control C, go back to our earlier model and press Control V. And that will put that back in there. So that way we got to do that and play with it. And we didn't, um, you know, all the other stuff wasn't in the way. We didn't have to mess around with soloing stuff. Soloing stuff has its place, but that certainly wasn't it. So the next thing is we want to make a load of duplicates of these. Um, let's see. Uh, duh, 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 duh. So let's call this pin and spring. And we've got one in the first circle, so we'll put one. Uh, let's not just copy and paste this. Let's create an instance. That way we only have to modify one if we need to change anything. So with pin and spring, we go to instance. Don't need to press alt or anything. Just click it and it will create a, a copy of it uh, or an instance of it. Now we'll go to circle one, circle two, circle three. This one we can copy because this is just copying the instance. And now we just, again, need to zero them out. Now, if you notice, they're all zero at the moment. The reason for this is because we're on surface mode still. So we need to go model. There we go. And it's only the Z on this one. It's the X and the Z on this one. That didn't do it. That's weird why that sometimes doesn't it. I know you always have to press enter, but it didn't even give me a chance that time. So zero, zero, enter. It did it to me again. What am I doing wrong? Whoa, do you want to calm down a bit? It's like it's got a mind of its own. No. <laughs> it's mocking me now. Stop it. Right. Um, zero, zero. Okay, there we go. So we've now got a pin on each one. Cool. Oh man, we're getting there. We're actually pretty close. Right, so now that we've got that done, we'll take all of our pin and springs out of our circles. You see why we did that now? That was pretty damn handy, wasn't it? Uh, okay, we don't even need these circles anymore, but we'll just keep them, we'll switch them off and we'll group them and just put them out of the way. There we go, just in case we need them. Uh, circles, or circulars as I sometimes might accidentally call them. Right. What are we doing now? Um, we have uh, the fun task of trying to texture it all coming up. Um, but let's see, let's make some, we'll dot some stuff around. Let's do this. Uh, let's see, let's see, see, see. So we, look, we need to light the scene and put a floor on. And obviously if you're familiar with my stuff, you know what's about to happen. I'm gonna use Infidio Pro just cause it makes it quicker. Um, if you don't have in video, you can make your own floor and your own lighting and everything. But this is why I made it because it's, it makes life easier. So there we go. We've put lighting into the scene. Job's done. Um, I'm just going to make sure that the floor lines up with the bottom. So <laughs> bottom, right. There we go. Just needed to move it down slightly. Um, and I'm also going to make sure my lights are lined up correctly. So in video pro, uh, lighting, and I'm going to rotate all lighting like so. Okay, so that's a pretty cool. That's about what I want. Uh, my hair light, I might just lower slightly. Um, and I think my fill light, I'm just gonna add a slight tinge of blue to it. So we get a bit of a blue light coming from over this side. And then my key light and ever so slight a bit of yellow. And this is only for no reason at all other than weirdness. Right, so we've got that. The next thing is we want to make the floor nice and dark. So we will do studio color, maybe have 
pretty black on one side um, and kind of will go to the dark blue sort of side of things the other side um, maybe make it diagonal diagonal the type of gradient we need to turn on reflection put that to about 10% maybe um, and I'm just gonna go with the standard floor and just hit render and see what that looks like okay so we've got a bit of a light reflection there which is quite cool um, I'm thinking though I want more going on in the ceiling but it's hard to tell now until we texture properly but at least we, we're, we're kind of on to a start um, I'm just going to turn the blur up on the floor a little bit more and I'm also going to go into our render settings and change uh, the uh, renderer to the physical renderer and set it to progressive that way we can just sort of hit go and it will just give us a really quick idea of how it's looking and as it kind of goes through it will get better and better so that's pretty cool okay looking quite nifty uh, what's next we need to um, drop some pins and springs and stuff around so our sweep is our spring and our subdivision surface here is our pin or pom or pin so again we can do the same trick where we just instance each one so instance a pin we've now got a pin instance um, we'll move that out like that and we'll rotate it R to rotate and put it aside hold shift it does it in increments now that's gone into the floor so let's just go into the outside view and make sure that that is sitting on the floor if we press s that will line that up for us nicely so okay we've got a bit of an angle thing going on so we need to somehow get this just right do 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 let's try moving our in points this is what I was saying well, I didn't want to work in points but there we go right that's got it about right the other way you can do it is make it um, dynamic that to be fair is uh, probably not a bad way to do it if you obviously in video the the textures uh, the dynamics tags are already set up but if you were to just maybe get this shape put a simulation read your body on it and press play that will fall that's now sat nicely on the floor go to your tag set initial state and then delete the tag that's now sat we know this on the floor and now if we want to move that around we just maybe change to the global uh, position and then no matter where we move that there that angle will stay the same you can see it you can see it on this one I'm pointing to it with my finger and you can't see that so there's no point but anyway no point right stop waffling let's just get this we'll get one of them there I can hold control and maybe get a copy um, if I just dump a load around something like that and then we can rotate them all a bit um, something like this Doo -doo. there we go so we've now got some pins at various different angles so that's going to look cool uh, we can do the same with the spring so we'll make an instance of the spring bang like that and pull that out and just lift that up and rotate it again we might as well use the same trick go to the simulation rigid body rewind and hit play do you know what I'm going to do I'm going to leave them all there and I'm going to make a copy of that one copy of that one copy of that one right so we make a bunch of springs let me just rotate them all around a bit mix it up like that okay and then I'm just gonna hit play cool so that's put all of my springs on the floor so I now go to my tags set initial state and delete all of the tags now all of my springs are sat and everything's got a little kind of element of randomness about it cool uh, what is next what is next um, let's have a quick look see how it's looking gives me a chance to have a drink gravy I'm a bit worried about these pins they're not looking quite right so I'm just going to go into this cylinder 
go into this mode here uh, and I want to see why if I grab all of that and shrink that down so it's very 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 tiny does that make that any better it's kind of put a bit of a nobble on it sort of that great and remember when you see in that sharp edge when you render it in the actual render window if I hit that it will use the subdivision surface as it's intended and you'll see that, that you get that nice rounded edge on there so I'll stop that okay dokey we're just keeping it running nice and fast and smooth now um, uh, the other thing that this has going on Let's put Nvidia down the bottom so we can find it easily, is the text. There are some other of the letters floating around. So the, the lower one, ah, so lower is actually upper. <laughs> okay, so upper, um, let's make an instance of this and we'll place this. Again, we, knew, we want this on the floor, so I might as well use that same trick. Cool and set initial state and delete. And we'll put that one over there. I'm not copying the original exactly here. I'm literally just placing these around. Um, this is why if you'd done them individually, you could have different letters sitting in different places, but I'm not too worried. I just want sort of some interesting things in the scene. Okay. So now we need to get a camera set up. So we'll make a camera, go into that view and let's find a good angle to look at all of this, this stuff from. Uh, okay, so that looks pretty cool. We could go for that maybe. Um, let's make the camera something like uh, 80 mil because we want to get a nice shallow depth of field, get that in looking pretty close, looking cool. Um, oh, hello. Hey, hello. My camera's flying around all over the place. Right, this white is the one of my uh, one of the lights from Infidio, so it's fine. Um, and we'll go with something like that. There we go. So we've got some things going on. Um, our scene is looking great. Obviously, we haven't textured anything yet, but we're going to get onto that now. The springs look a bit funny, actually. Um, I just noticed, I think my helix, yeah, 34 and 30. Let's just try that, make sure. I'm gonna make them, because I wanted the springs to look kind of even, but I don't want them traveling through the floor. No, that looks okay. Cool. Okay, so where are we up to now? We need to texture all of this lot. So let's do that. Um, let's start. So because we've used instances, we only have to texture the main ones. So we'll start with our lower and we need to create a kind of gold. Now gold is a notoriously evil color to try and create because it's a kind of mixture between orange and brown. So you can kind of try and do it like this, but it always looks a bit funky. So let's add a reflectance to it. So if you're on the old version, I'll do reflection legacy and then uh, do, let's do a layer color. Um, which I think you can do in the old version. There we go. So we've kind of got a bit of a goldy look going on there. Um, we can put the roughness up and maybe make it a bit knobbly. Uh, that might actually be even be all right. We've pretty much got there straight away. Uh, let's put it on. Um, and go lower. Let's have a quick look. Probably a little bit too goldy, but it's it's pretty close. Let's just go to the color and lower the the brightness a little. Again, maybe a little bit too goldy, but it's looking pretty cool for what I want, so that's cool. Um, I'm gonna create another one which I'm gonna do as my chrome. So literally under reflection, add reflection legacy. Do you know what? That's basically all I need on it. Um, 
Let's just go with that. And we'll put that on our pin and on our spring. And what we'll notice is that we'll have done all of them. So there we go. So now they're all nice and shiny. So that's grand. And then we've just got the top one to do. Now the top one on the original is transparent. So let's make a copy of this one. We'll go into transparency uh, and enable that and pull that down to about 71 and maybe add a bit of uh, refraction. I don't know how much, I'm kind of making it up now. Try that. But basically, whatever good render times we had before, we've now lost. It will now render like a, a bastard on any machine. Um, as you can see, that's really slowed down this machine. And this is a 32 core PC. <laughs> I get asked what the specs of my PC are all the time while we're waiting for this. Go to Rate My Funeral, FAQ. Uh, what camera do you use? What microphone do you use? What is your system spec? And there it is there. So you can have a look. Let's have a look. See, so how much has that slowed it down? But it looks pretty cool. We've, we've got some quite interesting details and reflections and stuff going on here. But this is going to take forever to render. Um, it's not so bad if you're doing single images, not so good if you're doing animations. So just for now, let's just turn the transparency off on that layer and hit render and just have a look. So it looks pretty cool. Um, obviously the original had a lot more mood going on, but I personally wonder how much of that was done in Photoshop. <laughs> uh, we can certainly try and uh, emulate a bit of that. But what we'll do... Um, is let's think uh what we will do let's enable depth of field so physical depth of field camera um, and an easy way to get uh, where you want to focus is just create a null obviously that's created that right in the center um and i think do you know what i'm going to put that null i will use one of my circles again i think the third one should be that one no nope. Number two, okay, so camera number, two, uh, circle number two, we'll put this null in circle number two. Uh, we need to zero it out. This is why I'm, I'm just getting a bit confused there with what was happening, there we go. Zero that out and raise that up to the topper, the topper one. And then basically we're gonna use that null in the camera as its focus point, so we tell it to focus on that null. And if we just go into the outside view, we will see that that's where the, the camera is now focusing on. So great. Um, and our physical renderer, let's put this down to something ludicrous like 0.4. And we'll see by hitting render how that's looking. Yeah, not too bad. To be fair, I could spend a lot more time on this texture to make it look slightly less Christmas crackery, um, but I'm gonna leave you to do that. This is just the tutorial to get you started on it. We're just playing around really. Uh, so that's cool, okay. Let's think. Um, that's looking pretty good actually, it's pretty cool. What I think I will do is I will go, I will come out of that I will enable my transparency again and I am going to set my render going and pause the video so that you don't have to sit and watch it um, and then come back and I'll show you a little bit of how to then make it look really moody and cool in uh, Photoshop. I'll tell you what I'm going to do though, just before I do, I'm just going to go into here and put my color down because there's just a, the gold is just a little too bright for my liking. And um, let's try that now. Right, cool. Okay, let's let that go and I'll speak to you again in a second. I just decided to resume because this is really, really slow. Um, <laughs> this is slower than I thought. And I suddenly remembered an old trick used to be if you turn off the color in a transparent layer, sometimes it would be much quicker. So I thought I'd try it in real time so you can see the the see it happen, see if it as does actually work. Uh, 
still seems to be pretty slow. It's that transparency, it's horrible. I've never used Octane Renderer. Maybe this is where it's amazing because you can do it. Or maybe the person that made that original image is bloody patient. Certainly a lot more patient than I am. Right, I'll tell you what, you can do it with that if you want. I'm going to do it with just ordinary metals. <laughs> so I'm going to turn the place, the transparency off, put the colour back on, and I'm going to set that going. I'm going to let that run for, I don't know, I'll give it a few minutes, let it look all nice and smart, and we'll have a little play with that. Okay, so I've let that run and do about 64 passes, so that's that's now pretty good quality. Um, and what I'm going to do, well, excuse that, right, uh, I'll explain it, is use the snipping tool just to uh, grab me a copy of that, like that, and I'm going to dump that into Photoshop. So Control N, Control V. Okay, and we've got a bit of an edge on the side here, so let's just choose the cropping tool and just pull that in. Uh, I was going to try and, there we go. Oh, hang on, we've got edges all over the place. Right, let's just get this cropping tool sorted out. Ba bum, ba bum. There we go. Job's done. Right, let's make this look a little bit better then. So not too difficult. There's a couple of nice little tweaks we can do in Photoshop. So if I make a duplicate of the layer, never edit your first layer because in case you want to go back, um, we can go maybe blur, tilt shift. This is quite cool. If uh, we get this and angle that, so we maybe. I have something going on a bit like this. Maybe pull that back there. We don't want that as harsh as that. Maybe like six. Pull that in. Okay. I am literally playing around now. So there we go. So what that does, that gives you your, your nice shallow depth of field um, outside of cinema. Uh, also, we maybe do a curves adjustment. Do a nice typical S curve to make it look nice and punchy and cool like that. Um, maybe do a vibrance adjustment so that we can pull some of the colors out that way. Maybe push them up again. And then what I like to do is offset that with a black and white um, and just pull the opacity of that down just to take the edge of some of those colors. Um, and then if we just quickly turn all those off, you can kind of see the difference that makes. There we go. Make it makes it look a little bit nifty. Um, perhaps you want to do uh, an, um, a, vi a vignette. Uh, so if we create a new layer, grab the gradient tool and do a circular, and do it the other way around to so that. There we go. No. How do we do this? Uh, that one, uh, uh, reverse, there we go. No, do it again. There we go, right, and that makes that. And then we just do this one with a, maybe like a multiply and pull that back a little bit, just so it takes some of the color out of the edges to highlight the middle a bit more. Um, and maybe, what else could we do? I just wanna punch those curves up a little bit. Something like that, I don't know. Um, there is a, a, a trick I occasionally use, which is create a layer and just literally select like a, maybe like a blue on this side and just color in a bunch um, and then maybe, not duplicate, create a new one, maybe select yellow or something like this and maybe draw a bit of a color there and then grab the two of them and change the, through the, the, the modes until you find something that looks a little bit cooler. Um, so maybe something like, that I don't know. You you might not like it. You might, but maybe just pull that back a little bit, just so it adds just that little bit extra something to it. Um, I don't know. Have a play. But basically, there you go. It's it's not quite the original. I'll, I'll I will put my hands up and say if we look at the original, the original one looks a little bit moodier. Um, but like I say, I can't get this. Um, glass to render in any kind of decent fashion. It renders so slowly. Um, but this is why I've, I've shown you how to make the, uh, the make the shapes. Have a go, see if you can replicate it. See if you can use it and do something else. I don't know, do what you wanna do. I hope you've enjoyed it. 
please remember to visit the website. Um, please remember to go and visit all of my social media stuff. If you've got Facebook, do me a favor, go onto the Facebook and give it a like. All right, if you've got uh, Twitter, go on there and give it a follow. If you've got YouTube, give it a subscribe. The YouTube subscribers are absolutely hammering the Vimeo subscribers. It used to, the Vimeo subscribers were up top, but now the YouTube is more than double. Uh, you know, we're at something like 12,500 YouTube subscribers now compared to the Vimeo ones. So come on, Vimeo guys, you've got to catch up. And also, you know, as I said earlier, I used Infidio Pro uh, in this tutorial if you like the idea of this uh, it's just a lighting studio that gives you a really really easy way to um, light your sit your light your models and your scenes and stuff you know it, it's very straightforward it's like a studio so if you just want if you've just got a product and you just want to light it and make it look smart bang put in video in and it does that for you I mean it, this is that's exactly what it does I made it just to make things quicker so I think that covers everything. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it was good. I've been around away for a while. I'll be a bit more uh, frequent with these tutorials, I promise. Um, uh, you know, I just, it's, it's difficult because of time. But anyway, I'm not gonna make excuses. I've bored you for long enough. See you again. Remember, leave me a comment if you know how, any better ways to do anything that you've seen in this, or if you didn't even know a better way, let me know that you didn't and you liked the way I did it, and that will make me feel better, and that will make me make more of these. Anyway, stop waffling. Laters.